work is done on an object when a force is applied on that object and the object is displaced in the direction of that force. And so with this definition for work being done, it is possible to calculate the work that is done by individual or specific forces acting on an object. And we start as we would any mechanics problem by drawing a free body diagram that shows that there is a force of gravity acting downward on this object, the force of gravity, the product of this object's mass and the gravitational acceleration of 9.8. And since the normal force is the only force acting vertically upwards, the normal force will in this case be equal but opposite to the gravitational force. We can then see that there is also an applied force of 140 newtons and there is a frictional force acting on this object. We can, since we know the normal force, we can calculate the value for that friction force by using the formula friction is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force where the coefficient is given as 0 0.3. The normal force we've just calculated as 98. And so we can see that the friction force acting on this object is then 29.4. Newtons. Now that we know what all the forces acting on the object are, we can calculate the work done by each of these forces. So we can start by saying that the work done by the applied force is equal to that applied force multiplied by the displacement of this object multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them, where the applied force is given as 140 Newtons. The displacement we have been told is 10 meters. And as we can see, the motion and displacement are in exactly the same direction. So the cosine of the angle zero between them, which tells us that 1,400 joules of work was done on this object. That 1,400 joules being positive means that that energy was added to this object. We can also calculate the work done by the friction force, which is the product of the friction force, the displacement of the object, and the cosine of the angle between them. Friction we have calculated as 29.4 newtons. The displacement of this object is still 10. And here we can see that the friction and motion of this object are opposite to each other, meaning the angle between them is 180 degrees. And so that tells us that the work done by the friction force is negative 294 joules. A negative work value tells us that energy has been removed from the system. So where the applied force is adding energy to the system, a negative friction value means that we are removing energy from the system. We can also calculate the work done by the force of gravity. That is the force of gravity multiplied by the displacement and the cosine of the angle between them. Force of gravity, 98 displacement, 10. And here we can see that the force of gravity and displacement are perpendicular to each other. Cosine of 90 is therefore zero. The force of gravity does zero work on this object. And the same would be true for the normal force, which also does no work on this object because the two are perpendicular to each other. Now, when we say that energy is added by the applied force in the form or that energy is added here, we need to know what form that takes. And the most common way to do this, or what we would previously have done, is we would have seen that this object has a net force acting on it, and therefore by Newton's second law will accelerate. We can see that the net force here would be the applied force minus the friction force because we subtract them since they are acting in opposite directions, where we can then say that the applied force of 140 Newtons minus the friction force of 29.4 is equal to the mass of this object given as 10 and the acceleration which is unknown and that tells us that a net force of 110.6 newtons acts on a 10 kilogram object and therefore the acceleration of this object is 11.06 meters per second squared to the right so when we say that energy is added to this object, that energy is clearly added in the form of kinetic energy because this object is accelerating, therefore its velocity is changing.
Now, we can calculate the amount of energy that is added here by calculating the network that is done on this object. And there are two ways in which to do this. The network done on an object can either be equal to the net force multiplied by the displacement of this object multiplied by the cosine of the angle between those two, where the net force we've just calculated was 110.6 newtons, the displacement 10 meters, and the net force and the displacement are in the same direction, and therefore the angle between them is zero. And so that tells us that the network done on this object is 1,106 joules. A separate way to calculate the network done on an object is simply by adding all of the work forces or all of the works by separate forces that have been acting on this object. And that would mean that the network acting on this object is the sum of the work done by the applied force, the work done by the friction force, the work done by the gravitational force and the work done by the normal force. We can add those values, 1,400 work done by the applied force, plus a negative value of 294, plus zero, plus zero. And that shows us that the network done on this object is 1,106 joules, which means that this object has gained 1,106 joules of energy. And as we said earlier, it has gained that in the form of a changing velocity, and we know that when we change the velocity, it is the kinetic energy of that object that changes because kinetic energy is one half mass multiplied by the velocity of an object squared.